everyone. My name is Sarah Schickman. I'm a New York licensed attorney and I'm the CEO of Lingia.com. We're a law firm that helps startups. In this video, I'm going to show you how to file a trademark. You could, of course, hire an attorney to file a trademark, but I'm going to show you how to do it yourself in case you decide to do it. It's a pretty simple process, just a few steps, and it'll save you a lot of money doing it yourself. I'm a big believer in teaching people how to do things themselves that are pretty simple if they're willing to put in the time. So step number one or question number one is, do you even need a trademark? The purpose of having a trademark is it protects you from somebody else stealing your name in your same industry. So for example, if you open a medical spa and you call it exuberance medical, you don't want somebody else to open the same medical spa with, with the same name in a different state. If you get a federal trademark, it protects you in all 50 states for 10 years, and then you could always renew it. So it's good to get a trademark. The fee for a trademark is only $225 per class. And we're going to talk about what that means per class. All right. So let's say you came up with a great business name. Should you just go ahead and file a trademark? First, what I would do is see if somebody else already has your name. So you can do a simple Google search and see if somebody else has your business name in any state. Once you're satisfied that nobody else has a name, or maybe somebody else does have the name, but you don't see that they trademarked it, you would search this trademark database to see if, in fact, somebody actually has the name already. This search is called TESS. It's an electronic database that gives you instant results. So it's not like you have to search and wait and ask questions. It's really simple. It's an online search. I'm going to put the link in this video right here. So when you're searching the online database for trademarks, you are looking for marks that have a name that are similar to yours. So for example, beautiful medical spa. And there's a problem with trademarking the word beautiful because it's an actual word. But let's say um, your, your business name is beautiful medical spa and somebody else has beautiful but spelled a little bit differently medical spa. You'll have a hard time getting trademark approval for that name. So make sure when you're searching in this database to also search related words or misspellings of your name, because if somebody already trademarked something very similar, most likely you're not going to be able to um, trademark it. Another thing is when thinking of your name, try to think of a unique word. So for example, you can't really trademark a word that already exists that's already associated with your type of business. So beautiful medical spa, a lot of times the trademark examining attorney who works for the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office will say, hey, that's just descriptive. That word should not be trademarked. So instead of calling your medical spa beautiful, think of a name, a unique name like Google Medical Spa. Of course, you can't use the word Google because they already have a trademark, but something like that, something unique with respect to your business, and then you could trademark it. So you, you're going to do the search and you're going to see if somebody else has your name or similar that's registered and live. So what that means is once you do your search, let's say there are a couple of search results, and, but they say dead next to them. Dead means there is no active trademark. Maybe they filed an application and they abandoned it or whatever. So you just have to make sure that if you see some results and it says dead, don't worry about it. But if it says live, then you do worry about it. So what happens if you do this search and something does come up? So for example, your company is going to be called Lampalicious right? And you see somebody already has it. One thing you can do is see who has it and then contact them and see if they would be willing to um, let you buy it from them, for example, or if they're using it just to see who your competition is basically in the trademark world. That's kind of an advanced step. I would do that through a lawyer, but most of the time when you search, you're not really going to find people who already have your name. So you can just proceed to the next step. The next step in filing your trademark is to actually go to the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office online to the website. I'm going to give you the link now and then file your online application. The application is really, really simple. Just a couple of pages. Um, there is no really good and easy way to save it. So make sure that when you start doing it, you're completely ready. So from start to finish, once you know what you're doing, it should take less than an hour to file the whole application. But your first time may take you a little bit longer. So don't worry about that. Um, just make sure you have enough time. You could always start over. It's not a, a super long process. So you're going to go to the USPTO office online to the website 
And the type of application that you're going to want to do is called TEAS+. That's the simplest online form, and the fee per class is $225. So what does that mean? What's a class? A class is what you're trademarking your trademark for. So for example, let's say the, my, the name of my business is McDonald's, and I have the trademark for hamburgers or the production of food or restaurants but I don't have that trademark for grocery stores or electronic stores or apparel. So you want to trademark your goods or services for what type of business you're actually in. So each class is basically the type of service or the type of business that you're in. So for example, Lengia, my company, is a law firm. So it's trademarked for that. It's not trademarked as a grocery store. It's not trademarked as an apparel company. It's not trademarked as a marketing company. It's trademarked as a law firm. So you want to decide which classes you want to trademark for. The fee per class is $225. It could get very expensive if you're trademarking for a bunch of things. I always recommend to my clients, really think about what you want to trademark for and do it just for those classes, not for everything under the universe. But really depends how much money you have. But in one application, you could file for all of the classes. So you don't need to submit let's say 20 applications for 20 classes, you just do one application. Um, you just have to pay for all the classes there. So now I'm gonna show you guys how to fill out the online TEAS Plus application. So we're gonna do it together step by step. When I do it by myself, it takes 10 to 15 minutes, but our first time may take a little bit longer than that. So we go to this link here, which I'm gonna put in the video and just follow along. So we are here on the application page and the first question is, is an attorney filing this application? If you're filing it yourself and you're not an attorney, you'll say no. And then we just press continue. The owner of the mark is you. So here you would put either your, um, the name of the company that owns the mark or you, your own name, if you own the mark individually. So if you're ever selling your company, usually people will want to buy the intellectual property together with it. So make sure to register it in your company name if that's what you want to do. Otherwise, you're going to have to do another legal document when it comes time to sell. Otherwise, uh, I'm going to write the owner of the mark is just me, Sarah. Okay, and the entity type, since I'm registering it myself, is going to be individual. And here, I'm a U.S. citizen, so I'll put that. Okay, and all you need to fill out are these fields with an asterisk. You don't need to fill, fill out anything else. Um, so just make sure to fill out the mandatory fields only. You don't need the others. All right, so the street address, I'm going to put in um, this address here. Um, what's also going to happen is once you file this application, you're going to get 20 different letters in the mail from people trying to get money from different services, like a trademark registration service, a trademark copying service, filing service. These are all kind of scammy companies that try to sound official and send you these different letters in the mail. Um, don't respond to any of those letters. You can just throw them out. Unless something on the letter says US Patent and Trademark Office, all those other spammy letters just don't respond. All right, so we're gonna put in the address. Again, the phone number, fax number here, they're not mandatory, don't need to put them in. Um, email address, that's, what, that's what's gonna be used for correspondence. So really important to put in an email here. And again, all these non-mandatory fields, the ones without the asterisk, you don't need to fill out. And if you have multiple owners of the trademark, let's say you own it together with another individual, you would click on this add owner button and then you would, you would um, add in their information too. But for now, I'm just gonna press continue. Okay, I have to check the box to authorize communication by email as well. So let's see here, just checking this box here and press continue. Telephone number has not been entered. Again, it's optional. I've never had anyone from the Trademark and Patent Office call me, so I usually don't put a phone number here. I just put an email. I like communications and writing more than um, phone number anyway. So that's okay, even though we don't have a phone number, we just press continue. Okay, now we need to upload an image of the mark eventually, but here we just put in um, the words of the mark, and the USPTO generates an auto image of the mark. So let's say it's Bountiful Medical Spa is the name of our business. And so 
we click on preview USPTO generate image and here we have to make sure that there are no typos. There's going to be no going back once this application is filed. If you want to go back, you're going to have to pay another fee. So just make sure that there are no typos. And then we press continue. Now, this is where we select the class for our trademark. This is where we add the goods and services. So what that means is for everything that we add here, for each one, we're going to have to pay $225. So I would say pick one. I'm going to search for the word medical spa. These get pretty specific. So I'm going to search for medical spa and see if anything comes up. And it takes a little bit time to search. So sometimes it may take a minute or two to load. So let's just wait here. Okay, so medical spa services, minimally and non-invasive cosmetic and body fitness therapies. That looks pretty good. So we so check this box, that's class 044, and it say insert checked entries. All right, perfect, so we have our class here. And then here we pick, are we using the mark already? Are we gonna intend to use it later? It's always a stronger claim if you're using the mark already, but here, section 1B, you could also put in that you're gonna use it later. So let's say we're already using it, section 1A. All right, this is really important. We need to attach a specimen. If we are already using the mark, then we need to prove that we're using the mark. What that means is we need to, we need to attach a file showing that we're using the mark. So the specimen can be a PDF that shows the mark, let's say on your website or in an email. The more commercial, the more in use you could show the mark, the better. So a PDF of you using the mark from your website is really good. And um, what you do is you just click on attach or remove a specimen. And then again, over here it shows you, it has to be a JPEG or PDF format, and it can't be more than five megabytes. You click on choose file and you find a file from your computer. Again, find a file that's um, gonna fit the criteria. I'm just gonna, Pick one here, see it's a JPEG and it's 1.4 megabytes, should be okay. Click on attach. And again, since it's a file, it's gonna take a little bit of time to upload, but here it is, we can see it. And then we click on return to application. Okay, see right here it says one file attached. So there's our file. Okay, description of specimen is, um, specimen shows use of mark on our website, bountiful.com. Let's just say that that's what it was. Okay, date, you first use the mark anywhere and first use the mark in commerce. So the date you came up with this mark, let's say it was January and you have to do it in this format, like 01, 01, 2009. And then the first date you use it in commerce, let's say that was 01, 01, 2018. The earlier, the better, of course, but you want to just be honest here because if it gets challenged, you're going to have to prove that you actually use the mark on those dates. So, and then you click here on the sign filing basis. We make sure this box is checked. And then since we're only filing it for this one class, we don't have to keep adding goods or services. We're just going to say, um, continue. All right. So it reminds us that we registered for one class, class 44 here. The fee per class is 225. And then we could sign directly right here and then pay with a credit card. Here you have to check these four boxes, make sure that they're checked. And here you're saying that you're, you're telling the truth, you're the owner of the mark, all that. Signature, you have to enter it with these lines here. So this is my signature here. Date signed is today, my name. My position is owner. Let's say I'm the, let's say I'm filing this not as an attorney, but as a, the actual owner of the mark. And here you could put in the phone number, but again, it's not mandatory, so you don't need to. Um, if there are multiple signatories. You're going to click on this add signatory box. Click on validate. Signatory's phone number is missing. That's okay. Okay. Um, here you can check your application. So you could click on input mark specimen to make sure that what you uploaded is correct. So I'm gonna click on input, and that's gonna give me the actual application data. So very good to just click on it really quickly to make sure that you didn't have any typos in the application. Because like I said, once you pay the fee, no going back. So now we're just checking our application to make sure it's correct. So here, we're just gonna make sure we typed in everything correctly, and then 
Once we're done, we press back. And then again, we click on the mark. And we check, okay, it's correct. We didn't make a typo. The specimen is the file that we uploaded. Make sure that you uploaded the right specimen, which is what you're showing um, where you're using the mark. And then you just say, okay, the email for acknowledgement, so for the receipt of the application, you have to type it twice. You, you put in your own email. Okay, um, you check this box here and you click on pay submit. Okay, and here, that's the last step. You have to pay $225, you select credit debit card, you put in the payment information, submit payment, and then you're done. That's it, this is the whole trademark application process. And now we're just gonna review a few important things about trademarks. Once you file your trademark application, it usually takes a few months for the trademark office to contact you, either that they're publishing your trademark for opposition, or if they have any questions, or with an office action. So what happens is, is an attorney gets assigned to you from the US Patent and Trademark Office, and they review your application. Sometimes they have a basic question where you just need to clarify something in the application. You just respond to them. Um, they're not scary, they're great people, they have really good people working there who are very responsive usually. And so just answer their questions. Sometimes you'll get an office action or an office letter which says, okay, we didn't approve your trademark, here's why, and here's the way you can um, respond. A lot of times, some applications don't get approved. That's okay. You can respond and we've had great success with going back to the trademark office, explaining our client's position and then getting the trademark approved. So it's just, it's a process. At that step, I would definitely recommend hiring an attorney if your tr initial trademark application doesn't get approved. But usually, as long as you did your initial search correctly and you saw that nobody else has a competing mark, a lot of times it does get approved and you can just get away with doing it yourself. And again, um, it takes just a few minutes, usually less than an hour online. In your email, you're gonna get a filing receipt with a number that's been assigned to your application. Really important to save this because you're gonna use that number for tracking. So just make sure that you have this number um, and that you save this email. So a few months will go by, you'll get a trademark um, notice in the mail saying, let's say your trademark was approved, and then you get this really pretty piece of paper from the trademark office with your actual trademark. This is what an approved trademark looks like that you get in the mail. It's a super exciting moment when you get one. Um, it looks very official like this. Sometimes a lot of these other companies that pretend to be the trademark office will send you different letters and different certificates. Unless it looks exactly like I showed you, it's not a real trademark. So if you have any questions about that, ask an attorney. Again, it should look something like this, not like completely different from this. That's not a real trademark. And then once you have your trademark, if you see other people using your name for the same class that you trademark, you could send them a trademark infringement letter. And that's something an attorney can help you with. So, like I said, the trademark will be valid for 10 years all across the US. And it's a really good investment. It's not very expensive. And it's a great protection for your business and a great investment for you to make early on, even though it is a couple of hundred dollars. Thanks for watching my video. My name is Sarah Schickman. And like I said, I'm the CEO of Lingia and a New York attorney.